All right, we are working with inequalities, and now we are doing solving inequalities with addition and subtraction. Um, there's a couple of tricks that we learned in class, and the students can apply those tricks as they see fit, but I'm going to just go through some of these, and let's start right here with number four. So number four, I have a minus two is greater than four. So how do I get the a by itself? Just like the equation, I do the opposite operation in the opposite order. There's only one thing here, so that's all we have to do is get rid of the 2. So it's subtracting 2, I'm going to add 2. Whoops, I mean, it's a little bit thick here. Subtracting 2, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I'm going to have a is greater than 4. So on my number line, my most important number is 4. I want two numbers at least on each side. Uh, oops. There we go. And then, because it cannot be equal to, I have an open circle on 4. 4 is my most important number. And it says A is greater than 4. So here's 4. Here's A is greater than 4. Now, nice thing about it when my variable is on the left here, my variable is on the left-hand side. The inequality tells me which way the arrow is going. If the variable is on the right side, it's going to be the opposite. Um, and the only time that changes is when we start dealing with <clears throat> negative coefficients of the variables. Uh, but I don't think we're going to run into that till next week. And we'll go over that in a separate discussion. All right. So... Let's take another look down here. Um, gets a little bit trickier, but not too much. So let's take a look at number 10. Number 10 is P plus 1 fourth is greater than or equal to 2. So what I want to do is I want to subtract 1 fourth from both sides. And now I'm at the point where, wait a second, I'm going to drop my sign here. Drop my P because 1 fourth plus negative 1 fourth is 0, 0 plus p, p. So here, i got to do 2 minus 1 fourth. Well, the problem is, is you got two holes. So I'm going to have to, if I'm writing this big, 2 minus 1 fourth, I'm going to have to borrow from this 2 to make it 1 and 4 fourths. 1 and 4 fourths is the same thing as 2. But now I could subtract my fractions and end up with my mixed number. So 4 fourths minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths, and I have the 1 whole. So my answer is 1 3 fourths. Now, when I am graphing this, I just want to pick a spot and make that 1 and 3 fourths. <clears throat> if I count by fourths, this would be 2, 2 and a fourth, 2 and a half, 2 and 3 fourths, 3. Or... I can just label them all the way down. So this would be 1 and 2 fourths, 1 and 1 fourth, etc. Okay, but that gets a little bit crowded for me. So I'm counting by fourths. Uh, this is 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and 2 fourths, 1 and 1 fourth, 1 three-fourths. All right, so I just need two numbers on both sides. There's my two, there's my three, one and one-fourth, three-fourths. And right here is the most important spot right here. And I'm looking at this. It says P is greater than or equal to. Since it can equal to it, I need a closed circle on that. And it's just greater. It's actually showing me which way to go. Okay, there's my solution. All right, let's take a look at number 14 here. All right, 5 eighths is greater than S plus 12 fifths. I got to get rid of the 12 fifths, so I'm going to add negative 12 fifths to both sides. Now, a nice thing here is I don't even have to worry about these denominators. They're already common denominators. Keep my sign, keep my S. Okay, 12 fifths plus negative 12 fifths is 0. So I just have to ask. 8 fifths plus negative 12 fifths. All right, they're opposite signs. So I'm really subtracting. 12 minus 8 is 4. Keep the fifths. 
and I keep the sign of the larger absolute value. 12 is further from 0 than 8, so I'll keep the negative sign for negative 12. So I got this. Now, I um, told the students we can flip this if we like, so it could tell you, or you can also read it backwards. S is less than negative 4 fifths. Negative 4 fifths is greater than S. So you could read it backwards and figure it out. But if I flip this around so I get my variable on the other side, let me put this a little bit lower. So I get my variable on the left. I take this and flip it over to get S. This has to flip. So it's still reading, it's pointing towards the S, it's open towards the negative 4 fifths. That has to stay the same. Okay? So that lets me know that my line's going to be going this way. All right. Most important number, negative 4 fifths. Let's see. Uh, negative 3 fifths, negative 2 fifths, negative 1 fifth, 0. So negative 3, negative 2 fifths, 0. Uh, this would be negative 5 fifths. So that would be negative 1. Uh, negative 6 fifths, or negative 1 and 5 fifths. Negative 7 fifths, negative 8 fifths. Okay. Now, I got S is less than this number, negative 4 fifths, my most important number. It's less than, it can't equal it, so I have to have an open circle. And it's less than, so I'm going this way. Now, should also get in a routine of checking your answer. I see over here that 0 is not in my graph. My graph does not include 0. So 0 should not work. So I'm going to try it up here, put a 0 up here. Negative 4 fifths is greater than 0. Not true. It's less than 0. So I got this right. I didn't go the wrong way. All right, let's take a look at maybe one more. We're just going up to 17, even though there's more problems than that. Just going up to 17. And let's do, let's go ahead and take care of this one right here. All right, so I got r plus 0 0.2 is less than negative 0 0.7. So I am going to take away or add the opposite, zero, negative 0 0.2. Add negative 0 0.2. R is less than, okay, they're both negative. I'm adding, I keep the sign, and just add 0 0.9. So my most important number is negative 0 0.9. So negative 0 0.8, oh, let's see, I'm going to make that one right, right here. Negative 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7, 0 0.6, negative 0 0.5, uh, negative 0 0.9, negative 1, negative 1.1, negative 1.2, negative 1.3, negative 1.4. Now, how I determine where I'm going to write down numbers is just, I was just looking for enough space to write it down so I could read it. Uh, other than that, you could be putting in whatever numbers you, can, you want here. I could have just made this negative 1 and then just put it a little bit on this side of negative 1. That would be fine. Um, whatever you like, really. It's kind of up to you on how you want to number that line, as long as you have two numbers above the key number and two numbers below it. So here's my key number, negative 0 0.9. R is less than that, so it's an open circle. And it's less. It's shown me this way. This time I wrote it above the number line. And that's okay, as long as we can see clearly what number it is. And this number here does not work. So I'm going to try that. Negative 0 0.5 is less than negative 0 0.9. No, it's not. This is actually larger. Okay, so hopefully have that done. They just went up to 17, and we're going to work on some story problems and stuff tomorrow. Uh, have a good night.